Okay, gang, let's get started. Uh, so again, we're on page we're on page 16 of the big packet. Here we go. Uh, so today we're going to cover linear and uh, quadratic approximations and the derivative. Uh, next class, it says more related rates. We're just going to do more related rates next class. And then uh, I will point out uh, class number 32 uh, is a related rates in class quiz. I'll tell you about it later. But anyway, uh, just uh, sharing, there are three different days we're spending on related rates. That is uh, my way of weighting how difficult I think that these related rates questions are. Um, another reminder, the related rates homework is not due today. It's not due next class. It's going to be due on Friday uh, coming up. So take your time with that. They are tough. Um, uh, we do have a quiz, which I will hand out on the 20th. I guess that's this coming Monday. And then I'll collect it on Wednesday. Any questions on the calendar? OK. Then let's jump in here uh, at the top of page 16. In this class, we look at two powerful approximation techniques used in applied mathematics when a function is just too complicated and messy to work with. So uh, we're going to take a quick look at a GeoGebra file first to give you a sense of, uh, of where we're headed. Um, so take a look at this uh, function that's graphed here. Uh, look, the uh, high is up here at 1 and negative 1. Uh, looks like it goes right through the origin, and uh, we have a guess for like what what this x-intercept is. Maybe pi. What what function is this? Sine, right? Like it's a, through the origin and going up. Okay, so I'm just going to drag uh, to the right here. So like there's two pi and three pi. Let me just keep going. Four pi, five pi, six pi. And well, sine does not look like that, does it? So this thing that did an awful good job of looking like sine for a long time, actually, at some point, just shoots up to infinity on the one side and down to minus infinity on the other side. And in fact, it's not pi at all, although I wanted you, uh, sorry, it's not sine of x at all, although I wanted you to say that it was sine of x. It is a polynomial of degree 49. I'll show it to you. Uh, I did trick you. Uh, here's the formula for the thing that we just graphed. Uh, it's x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial minus plus minus plus. I'll keep going. Uh, so, so like 5 factorial means, um, what does 5 factorial mean? Yeah, so starting at 5, <clears throat> multiply all the way down until you get to 1. That is 5 factorial, it's 120. Okay, so this guy uh, goes up to x to the 49th over 49 factorial. So if you plot that uh, ridiculous polynomial, it does a real good job of imitating the sine function until we get right out here to around 18 or 19. In fact, I'll show you the sine function uh, on the same window here. Uh, there's the real sine function. I can't tell them apart until I'm like way out here, right? Like 19, 18-ish, that's when I can tell them apart, but goodness it. It does a very good job of approximating the sine function, right? It's an imposter. OK, so um, if you continue to take Calculus 2 next semester, uh, we will see where all of this gobbledygook with the factorials and the odd powers comes from. Today, we are just doing the first sort of like thing headed in that direction. So we're not going to get up to degree 49 degree. Today, we're going to get up to degree 2. We're going to do degree 1 and 2 stuff, but it's supposed to approximate uh, a function that maybe we don't want to work with. The sine function is not a terrible function, but polynomials are pretty nice, right? Easy to take derivatives of. Next semester, we'll see that they're easy to take anti-derivatives of. So we're going to be pretending uh, that we don't want to deal with a particular function that's given to us, and instead we will approximate it with a polynomial, which is just easier to do uh, lots of calculus and algebra on. Hunter, did you have a question? Okay. All right, so let's uh, start here with number two. It says consider the function f of x equals the square root of 1 plus x. That is the function that we are going to try to imitate, right? That is like the sine function. Uh, and we're going to build a linear function that behaves similarly to uh, f of x near x equals 0. So here we go. Uh, I've got all this stuff here. I don't know what happened to my formatting. I meant for these things here to be lined up with each other. So imagine they're perfectly right below each other. And we're just going to fill stuff in here. So f of x equals, we're just copying that. That's the square root of 1 plus x. And let's go ahead and uh, take a derivative of that thing. So taking a derivative of that thing uh, means that I uh, probably want to rewrite it, right? How do we want to rewrite? Yeah, let's raise it to the half. 
And so then we'll come down here and take our derivative. So I see stuff to a power. Power comes down. Copy the stuff. Subtract one from the power times the derivative of the stuff. What is it in this case? Just one. Okay. And so it would be fine to put that answer in this uh, other blank in the first column, f prime of x is that thing. But I'm going to plug a number in for x in just a second. So I want to write this in a more friendly way. So this is really equal to, uh, so I'm going to write a fraction here. Um, so uh, where is this 1 plus x, top or bottom? It's on the bottom because it's negative, and it's inside of a square root because it's a half. Okay, so let's put it down where it belongs. And how about that 2? Is that on the top or the bottom? That's on the bottom there. And there's just a lot of 1s on the top. So okay, that's as friendly as it comes. So we'll put that in our blank up here. Okay, so we're going to pause on the f and the f prime, and we're going to come over to the right-hand side of this page, and we are going to start with a uh, L of x over here equal to um, ax plus b. And the reason that we are starting with that is that it says build a linear function. And so every linear function that we start with is just going to be ax plus b. Uh, you're probably more comfortable with mx plus b, but uh, we're going to go somewhere else that m doesn't have any place. So we'll just do ax plus b instead of mx plus b, but it's the same. a and b are things that we are going to determine. So here's how we determine. First, we take a derivative. So what is the derivative of ax plus b given that a and b are both constants? It is just a, right? It is the number touching x, which is just a, and the plus b disappears. Okay, so that was easy. All right, so now let's see if we can fill in the stuff in the middle. So it says find f of zero and find f prime of zero. And the reason zero is coming in is because it says, let's approximate things near x equals zero. That's, that'll be given to us in every one of these problems. Not necessarily the number zero, but some number will be given. So we plug zero in uh, over here. So we get square root of one plus nothing, which is one. Okay, that's easy. And let's go ahead and plug zero into uh, our ax plus b formula. Again, that is x that we are plugging into. So we get a times zero plus b, which is just b. Okay, that was so much fun. Let's do the same thing with the derivatives. So we're going to plug zero into f prime and into l prime, into both. And if we plug zero into f prime, so we go one over two square root of one plus nothing. So that's a 1 over 2 times 1, which is just a 1 half. That's good. And then we're going to plug 0 into L prime. You see here it says L prime of 0. Now, L prime doesn't have any x's in it. What is L prime of 0? It's a. L prime of 17 is also a. L prime of anything is a. Right? L prime is constant in this case. OK, so here's what we're after. We are trying to find the values of a and b to try to make this generic linear function match that square root of 1 plus x as good as possible. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to make the two things agree with each other, f and l, at 0. So these two green answers, I'm just going to make them equal to each other. And these two purple answers, I'm going to make them equal to each other. So we're just going to match them up in the f line and also in the f prime line. So let's write down our two equations over here. So making the green things equal, what, what's the equation? 1 equals b. Hey, super, we just found b. Remember, the goal was to find a and b to try to make this linear function match that square root function. And then we make purples equal to each other, and we get 1 half equals a. And that's it. Those are the values of a and b to try to make the linear function agree with the square root function near x equals a. Um, uh, sorry, near x equals 0. Oftentimes, there's more algebra to do over here in these two equations. In this case, it was just already solved. But if, if for some reason it said, you know, like 5b equals 1, you just solve for b by dividing by 5. Uh, maybe this one here actually said 5b minus 2a equals 1, in which case, well, you say, hey, I know a equals a half, and then you substitute it, and you can find b, right? Okay, so let's write our final answer. Uh, we're going to write this guy in orange. So our final answer is L of x equals 
We started with an AX plus B, where A and B were numbers to be determined. We just found them. So what does that become? One half X plus one. There you go. And that's it. So again, we started with a generic linear function. We made uh, the linear function equal the original function at zero, and then we made the derivatives equal each other at zero, and then we found the values of A and B, and we're done. So this thing that we just found, circled in orange there, is called the uh, linear approximation for the original function, or it's called the local linearization. Local because it's focused on one point x equals zero. All we did was make these two functions look like each other at x equals zero. The farther you get from x equals zero, probably the worse they're going to look like each other. But anyway, it is the local linearization because near x equals zero on this square root graph, the function is going to look an awful lot like the line that we just found, the one half x plus one. We'll see a picture on the next page, but let's see if we can plug some stuff in first. Okay, so uh, we've got three different values of x here. We're going to plug into both uh, the original function and our local linearization, the one-half x plus one. So we'll plug three in. So f of three, square root of one plus three, square root of four is two. Easy enough. Let's plug three into this guy. L of three is equal to uh, one-half of three plus one, which is two and a half. Again, big picture here, we were trying to approximate that square root function. Square root functions are generally kind of messy. The right answer is two. How far off were we with our approximation? Half. Okay, that's not great, but it is not terrible. Um, let's try the uh, plugging in 0.3. F of 0.3 equals square root of one plus 0.3, which is the square root of 1.3, which is really easy if you have a calculator, but really hard if you don't, right? Like if I asked you to get an approximation to the nearest hundredth for the square root of 1.3, I think there's a lot of trial and error that you'd have to do. You'd have to do stuff like, okay, uh, what if the answer is, uh, I don't know, like what if the answer is like 1.2? Like what if, what, if, what if this is roughly 1.2? What would that mean? It would mean if I square this guy, I get the answer of 1.3. So you'd have to square this and you say, oh, that's really 1.44, right? Okay, what does that mean about 1.2? Too small or too big? This is too big. I'm trying to get 1.3. So you say, okay, well, what about 1.1 squared? Okay, well, that's 1.21. Too big or too small? That's too small. So now I'm someplace in between. And so now we're doing stuff like 1.15 squared, right? Oh, I don't know. Uh, 2, 4, 11, 12. Uh, I think I can do this thing on, on 21, 132. 1.3225. Somebody? Yep. Boom. Uh, 1.15, too big or too small? Uh, it's a little bit too big, but we're honing in, and this is really annoying without a calculator, yes? yes. Okay, so instead of that, <laughs> so, let's, so let's get somebody with a calculator, but like this is the cheesy part where we're using a tool that I don't want us to use. What is it? One, four, one more. Okay, good enough. 1.140, easy with the calculator, really annoying without. But let's compare that to finding L of 0.3, the same 0.3 that was given over there. So this is supposed to be half of 0.3 plus one. Half of 0.3 is 0.15, without a calculator. The point is, if we have a calculator, you're just typing square root of 1.3. The point is we don't have a calculator. So in this case, without a calculator is easy, right? 1.15. How far off were we from the right answer, which was that 1.140? We're off by a hundredth, which is pretty darn good. Let's take a look at this next one here. This 0.04. So f of 0.04 is the square root of what number? 1.04. Okay, again, this part right here is the part which we shouldn't be allowed to do, where you just type it in, it makes it trivial. But it's a hard problem if you don't have a calculator. Somebody give me an answer here. Okay, that's good enough. Hard without a calculator. But L of 0.04, that's really easy without a calculator. 
we're just doing half of 0.04, and we are adding one. Everybody see it? One half x plus one. Half of 0.04 is 0.02, and we add one. Without a calculator, we get 1.02. How far off were we there? Really not far. 10 hundred thousand, 10 thousands. We're off by two ten thousands. Was the, was the, am I right? 10 hundred thousand, 10 thousand, two ten thousands. Uh, was this 1.0198 exact or was there more? There was more, which means we were off by less than two ten thousands. Yes? Okay, less than two ten thousands. Trivial to plug 0.04 and trivial to plug any number into that linear function, right? Without a calculator. It's a piece of cake. Closer to zero, you get something. Which makes sense, right? Because all we did was focus our attention on x equals zero up above. And we made them perfect at x equals zero. We made them agree at the spot. The y value is the same. And we made the tangent line have the same slope. And so, of course, the, the closer you get, the, the better the approximation. Okay, so here's a picture that reveals all. Uh, the square root of 1 plus x is this function right here. There it is. And the y equals, or the L of x equals uh, 1 half x plus 1 is this guy. And so we'll make one observation first. If you hone your attention only at x equals 0, these two functions are identical, right? Like if you could zoom in on that thing, they would look better and better and better in terms of the approximation. Just like when I approximated sine of x, it looked really good between like negative 18 and 18. And then only as I got really far away from 0 did it look not so great. So this approximation looks really good at x equals 0. And then the farther away you get, the worse the approximation is. Um, but then maybe a surprise. What, what, what is that line for that curve at x equals 0? It's the tangent line. And we could have found tangent line for this thing like a few weeks ago. We didn't go out of our way to find the tangent line here, right? I didn't say find the tangent line. I said find a linear approximation, the best fit line for this curve. And by making the y values equal and by making the slopes equal, we found the tangent line. So sort of like this backdoor way to get the tangent line. So what special line did we find? We found the tangent line, yeah, at x equals zero. Yeah, and so like if you wanted to approximate, like let's suppose that you have this square root function and you wanted to approximate it like at x equals three, say, or not approximate it at x equals three, but like approximate it near x equals three, well then you would find uh, the best fit line, um, focused on x equals 3 instead of x equals 0. And it would be really good near x equals 3 and not so great as you get farther from x equals 3. So like if I wanted to plug in like 3.02 like into that function, I'd probably focus my attention on 3 instead of 0. OK. All uh, right. So uh, number 7 is just kind of summarizing what we did here. The goal of this section is to be able to approximate y values of points on a curve with y values of points on a simpler function, like a line in this case. Let's use our linear approximation to estimate the square root of 2. So recall that we had this uh, f of x equals square root of 1 plus x, and that was our linear function. So let's figure out what value of x I need to plug in if ultimately I want the square root of 2. What value of x am I plugging in here? It's not 2. It's 1. Yes? When you plug 1 in for x, you get the square root of 2 at the end of the day. Yeah? <clears throat> okay, so if you type on the uh, calculator the square root of 2, you will get 1.414. 1. You want more? I can... <laughs> Uh, okay, so the square root of 2 is roughly that number from the calculator. Let's see how good we are if we use the linear function here. Again, what value of x am I plugging in here? It's 1. It's not 2. It's 1. So 1 half of 1 plus 1. So 1.5. How far off? Less than a tenth. Okay. All right. So uh, I think that is that. So the activity should be on the next page. Am I right?